Okay, you guys, so we're going to um, start a really important lesson um, that you're going to need if you want to move on to more exciting music, um, you know, harder things, expand your repertoire of music. You're going to need to learn how to shift. So we're going to get into that today in these three video lessons. This first one is just an introduction to shifting. I'll tell you about my rules for shifting and all that. The first thing you will need is your instrument in tune, all right? So if you need to pause and go grab your instrument, this is a play along video. You're gonna need it. So I'll wait, pause the video, go grab your instrument, tune it, and then join me again. Okay, now that you've got your instrument, you're in tune, Let's talk about our first position that we're going to learn today is called third position. So everything we've played thus far, um, where our first finger is on that first finger tape, that's called first position. Duh. So we're going to learn about third position today. So I want you to go on your A string. This is good for both violins and violas. I'm on the violin today. But let's go to the A string for everybody. Find your D with your third finger. <laughs> Find third finger D. Did you find it? Okay. Now, take that third finger, lift it up, replace it with first finger. Put first finger where third finger normally is and play that D. Now, I have my tuner on and it's helping me figure out if I'm in tune. Um, if you have that, use it. If you don't, tune it with your open D, right? So now your first finger is where third finger normally is. Congratulations! You just found third position, all right? So now you're in third position. So now what we're going to do is figure out how we're going to go from first position to third position because in music, quite often, you will have to move from first position to third position. So let's practice that and kind of learn uh, Miss B's rules of shifting here. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and take your first finger, find first finger B, go back to first position, find first finger B on the A string. Now I want you to move your whole hand up and find that D. And if you're not in tune, I'm not quite in tune. Just shift it around until you're in tune. Now you're on your D, play your D, freeze your bow, and take that first finger all the way back to the first finger tape on B. What we're going to do is practice that motion a whole lot because it's a muscle memory thing. Maybe you have a tape and that can help you out, but really we shouldn't have to be looking at it eventually to get that and we need to do a little muscle memory. That brings us to... Da, 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 Miss B's rules of shifting. You can thank my graphics team for those fantastic graphics. It's me. So, the first rule of shifting. You need to take your whole hand with you, including your thumb, right? So, what I'm talking about here is that if you go from B to D, that that whole hand maintains its shape and just moves or shifts up the fingerboard and up the neck of the instrument. What we want to avoid, and so many violins and violas when they first learn it, they're like, no, my thumb can't move, my, my thumb, this is where my thumb goes. And they try to go and see what happened there is I just moved my finger up without moving my thumb at all. That's a no-no. And you might be able to get away with that if you're going to just B to D. But what happens when I start adding fingers? If my thumb is stuck all the way back here and I'm trying to be in third position, you're going to be flat. It's just that's the way the world works. So you need to move your whole hand with you. So right now, without even playing with the bow, take your left hand, put it in first position. Now slide the whole thing up to third position and then back. Just do this a few times. What you're going to notice is if you're one of those, I have a grip of death type of people, and you're really squeezing on that instrument, this motion's going to be hard. 
All right, so we got to get rid of the grip of death. Really, you should have look mom no hands position, and if you're holding here, you don't need the grip of death. You can be real light with it and just move that hand up and down. You need that motion. The other thing you're going to notice, you're going to be struggling if you have pizza wrist. If you have pizza wrist, oh, that's going to limit our ability to shift because you're literally stopping yourself from shifting. So we need a good left hand. We need light, uh, no grip of death. Just move it on up and down, up and down. Great. Okay. So with that kind of motion in mind, bringing that whole hand with you, including that thumb, let's add this left hand, uh, right hand back in. Let's add the bow back in. So shake it out. Find first finger B. One more time. All right. Find first finger B. We're going to take our whole hand, and I want to hear the slide. I mean, I can't literally hear it, but I want you to hear this slide. We're going to go. I want to hear it like a siren. Give that a couple tries, back and forth. I'll do it with me, you, with you. Just go for it for a few seconds. going to want to hear that slide unless your music says to like glissando we're not going to want to hear that slide but I want you to just feel that motion I want you to feel um, the space between those two notes okay so I have turned my tuner back on it turned off um, but the, the tuner will help if you just want a quick check of if you're in tune or not okay so let's try a few of those together so let's go B slide D D slide B with the slides in between. Set it up on a first finger beat and ready go. B B D slide B. One more. Big slide. So now that we've done that and your hand is starting to get that motion back and forth, let's talk about a few more rules of shifting here. So to make that um, transition uh, nicer sounding, right? We don't always want that slide in there. Let's practice a few things that's gonna help with that. The first, the second rule of shifting is we need to lift up on the finger and glide on top of the string. So the main reason we're getting that big slide sound is because we're keeping the finger pressed down the whole time, right? It's in the string the whole time. But what you're eventually going to want to do with that finger in quick time is play, lift it up out of the string. So I took the weight and the pressure out of the finger. I just glide it lightly on top of the string. I move it and then I press it back down. I glide on top of the string and back down. So um, I want you to try that on your own for a second. It's B, glide, D, D, glide on top, then B. Try that on your own a few times. I'll do it with myself. together, you might have noticed that you still get a little bit, even when you glide, you get that little kind of surfacey sound. That's okay for now. Um, but I just want you to focus on that left hand kind of gliding on top, not taking it off and placing it up and hopping back and forth. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want you to hop. It's a gliding motion on top of this string. All right, let's try a few of those together with the glide. It's okay if you get a little slide in between. Let's try to glide on top of this string. So start back on B. We'll go B, glide, D, then D, glide, B, 
ready, set, and go. B, glide, D, D, glide. once we get there. Of course, if we're not quite in tune once we've moved, you can always tune it. I'm not looking for perfect intonation right now. All right, so that's what's the second rule of shifting. There's one more that's definitely going to help um, make it sound nicer, right, and take away those slurpy sounds in between. The final one is to pause your bow slightly while you shift. So we practice a little left hand thing, the gliding, to help but we gotta control the right hand as well to make that shift sound clean. So that's why we've been kind of pausing between. So here's what I want you to do now. We're gonna go back, we're gonna play the same exercise, B to D. We're gonna stop the bow, we're gonna shift, press it down, and then play. If it's not in tune, you can tune it. We're gonna play that same note, rest, glide on top, and then play. So we have a full beat of silence between. I'll do it without talking. So I want you to freeze your bow in between. Try that a few times on your own. I'll do it a few times on my own. you to think about is I don't know where you are and I don't know what kind of posture you have but let's all find that really nice posture again show me that look mom no hands position shake out that left hand give it a little break then really lightly place it here first finger on first finger tape on the B and we're gonna go play pause shift D then D pause shift B we're gonna do that maybe three or four times Ready? On the B, rests in between. B, shift. Pause. Glide. Glide. One more time. to do to make a clean shift and not have that big rest in between is just shorten the rest. Try it with a uh, smaller rest with me. Ready, go. together. Go. Still pause, but try to make that pause smaller. Do it on your own for a few seconds. I'll do it on my own. together. So what you may have noticed is when you make the pauses smaller and smaller, you might start getting those slurps. And that's okay. If this is your first time shifting, that's going to happen. That's totally understandable. As you get more comfortable, those uh, slurpy sounds, you're going to get better at just targeting and placing that finger down without those slides in between. So the last thing I want to kind of give you to help with this is a little target practice. So part of this is what I called um, muscle memory. Right, so figuring out, and you might be really in tune. I'm not in tune every time I shift up. Um, so let's just practice a little bit of muscle memory and try to do a little target practice here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play that first finger B, we're gonna stick with the same kind of exercise. But we're gonna close our eyes.
guys, we're gonna shift and then open them. You know, if you need to target your uh, finger tape, see how close you got? Or you can check with your open D or maybe you have a tuner here, that'll tell you exactly how in tune you are. So we're gonna go with our eyes closed. Check it. How in tune are you? And then close your eyes again. And how in tune did you get your B? Mine was quite sharp. So I know I need to tune it. So on your own, try that shift. Nobody's listening. Nobody cares if you're in tune or not. Just check yourself. Do a little target practice with your eyes closed. Check yourself. Close them again. Do it on your own a few times. I'll do it on my own. I just like to call target practice. Just test yourself. Close your eyes. See how close you can get. Um, hopefully what you've noticed is maybe you have a tendency. My tendency is I'm usually sharp on the D so I go a little too far and I'm usually um, sharp on the D so I don't, uh, the B, so I don't come back quite enough when I shift. I know that's my tendency because I practice, I've done target practice a lot. So what that helps me is I can anticipate, okay, I'm probably gonna be sharp. I need to go a little farther back than I think. Um, and knowing your tendencies can really help. So I um, encourage you to, when you want to do some shifting, if you wanna practice some shifting, just some sirens. Some pauses in between. With the gliding of the finger and the stopping of the bow. Making it faster. And then some target practice. And moving in between first and third position is going to be really important for playing things in third position and playing um, harder music. Some of this stuff on your audition material is in third position. So practice uh, those exercises. 